Humans have been telling stories and tales of what lurks in the shadows ever since we've been huddled around fires in the darkness. Passing down tales and stories that were designed to keep us alive. We have told our children to stay in the light, to not wander off. Be it that old woman with the candy house or the boogeyman under the bed, we warn our children that there are things out in the world that will carry them off into the night. Where there once were forests, there are now buildings. And as we once gathered around fires and told stories, we now get on our computers and visit forums and websites, creating new stories with warnings for the digital age. One such tale is that of the Slender Man. The Slender Man was created on June 10th, 2009, on a thread in the Something Awful forum. The thread was a Photoshop contest in which the users were challenged to create paranormal images. Forum poster Eric Knudsen, under the pseudonym Victor Surge, contributed two black and white images of a group of children to which he added a tall, thin, spectral figure wearing a black suit. Although previous entries had consisted solely of photographs, Serge submitted his submission with the accompanying text, supposedly from witnesses, describing the abduction of a group of children and giving the character the name The Slender Man. We didn't want to go. We didn't want to kill them. But its persistent silence and outstretched arms horrified and comforted us at the same time. The quote under the second photograph read, One of two recovered photographs from the Sterling City Library blaze notable for being taken the day which 14 children vanished and for what is referred to as the Slender Man. Deformity is cited as film defects by officials. Fire at library occurred one week later. Actual photograph confiscated as evidence. By adding these short quotes, Eric, in essence, created a fictional narrative for the images, catching the imagination of viewers. Eric was heavily inspired by the likes of H.P. Lovecraft, Stephen King's The Mist, and stories of shadow people. Knudsen's intention was to formulate something whose motivations can barely be comprehended and which caused unease and terror in a general population. It seemed he was successful. Over time, this narrative changed and evolved as others added to the lore of the Slender Man, spawning numerous works of fan art, cosplay, and online fiction known as creepypastas. Horror stories told in a short format that were easily copy and pasted on multiple websites. Let loose on the internet, The Legend of the Slender Man became the subject of a myriad of stories by multiple authors within an overarching, growing mythos. In her book, Folklore, Horror Stories, and the Slender Man, Development of an Internet Mythology, Professor Shira Chess of the University of Georgia connected the Slender Man to ancient folklore about fairies. Like fairies, the Slender Man is otherworldly, with motives that are often difficult to grasp. His appearance is vague and often shifts to reflect what the viewer wants or fears to see. And like fairies, the Slender Man lives in the woods and wild places and kidnaps children. Many aspects of the Slender Man mythos first appeared on the original Something Awful thread. One of the earliest additions was added by a forum user named Thorio Up who created a folklore story set in 16th century Germany involving a character called Der Grobman, which was implied to be an early reference to the Slender Man. The first video series involving the Slender Man evolved from a post on the Something Awful thread by user C. Gars. It tells of a fictional film school friend named Alex Crowley who had stumbled upon something troubling while shooting his first feature film, Marble Hornets. The video series published in a found footage style on YouTube, forms an alternate reality game describing the filmer's fictional experience with the Slenderman. The ARG also incorporates a Twitter feed and an alternate YouTube channel created by the user named To The Ark. At the time in 2013, Marble Hornets had over 2,500 subscribers around the world and had received 55 million views. Other Slenderman themed YouTube series followed, including Everyman Hybrid, and Tribe 12. In 2012, The Slender Man was adapted into a video game titled Slender, The Eight Pages. Within its first month of release, the game was downloaded over two million times. Several popular variants of the game followed, including Slender Man's Shadow and Slender Man for iOS, which became the second most popular app download at the time. 
The legend of the Slender Man was at its peak on May 31st, 2014, when two 12-year-old girls in Waukesha, Wisconsin, held down and stabbed a 12-year-old classmate 19 times. When questioned later by authorities, they reportedly claimed that they wished to commit a murder as a first step to become proxies for the Slender Man, having read about him online. They also stated that they were afraid that the Slender Man would kill their families if they did not commit the murder. After the two girls left the scene, the victim crawled out of the woods to the roadway. A passing cyclist alerted authorities, and the victim survived the attack. Both attackers have been diagnosed with mental illnesses. After years of back and forth in the courts on whether the girls were competent to stand trial, one girl was sentenced to 25 years to life, followed by communal supervision until the age of 37. The other girl was given the maximum sentence, 40 years to life, until complete resolution of symptoms or until the age of 53, whichever may happen first. In 2020, an appeals court rejected the second girl's petition to be retried as a juvenile. Her attorney, Matthew Pinnix, argued that she should have been charged with attempted second-degree intentional homicide rather than first-degree, and argued that the girl gave statements to investigators before being read her Miranda rights. He petitioned the Supreme Court of Wisconsin to review the ruling. In early 2021, the Wisconsin Supreme Court declined to hear the appeal. The stabbing in Waukesha spawned a nationwide moral panic over Slender Man across the United States. Parents across the nation became worried about the potential dangers that stories about Slender Man might pose to their children's safety. Russell Jack, the police chief of Waukesha, warned that the Slender Man stabbing should be a wake-up call for all parents, that the internet is full of dark and wicked things, a warning which numerous media outlets publicized heavily. After hearing the story, an unidentified woman from Cincinnati, Ohio, told a reporter in June of 2014 that her 13-year-old daughter had attacked her with a knife and had written macabre fiction, some involving the Slender Man, who the mother said motivated the attack. On September 4, 2014, a 14-year-old girl in Port Ritchie, Florida, allegedly set her family's house on fire while her mother and 9-year-old brother were inside. Police reported that the teenager had been reading online stories about the Slender Man. Eddie Daniels of the Pasco County Sheriff's Office said the girl had visited the website that contains a lot of the Slender Man information and stories. It would be safe to say that there was a connection to that. Several scholars have argued that, despite being a fictional work with an identifiable origin point, the Slender Man represents a form of new digital folklore. Shira Chess argues that the Slender Man exemplifies the similarities between traditional folklore and the open source ethos of the internet, and that, unlike those traditional monsters such as vampires and werewolves, the fact that the Slender Man's mythos can be tracked down to a single point offers a powerful insight on how myth and folklore form. Chess identifies three aspects of the Slender Man mythos that ties it to folklore. It is created collectively rather than a single individual. The story varies, the story changes depending on the teller, and the performance, meaning that the storyteller's narratives change to reflect the audience's response. He lives now in the dark corners of the internet in our minds, a living myth that is constantly changing and evolving. He is now a part of the collective human consciousness. For good or bad, he's affecting our world. Who knows? Maybe in a hundred years, we'll still be telling Slenderman stories the same way we talk about vampires and werewolves. I'm Broadcaster 7. Are you receiving the night signal?